Welcome to The Crafty View. I'm Diane Williams, the host for the show, and the show is produced by the Craftsman's Guild of Mississippi. They're located at 950 Rice Road in Ridgeland, and I hope you'll have an opportunity to go there, visit the facility. Did you know you could even rent the facility? But go there, they have a gallery and a gift shop where you can look at the works of incredible artisans and craftspeople and maybe purchase something for that special person in your life. But today we're going on a field trip and we're going to the home of Jackie Watkins out on Lake Caroline in Madison County. There's gonna be so much to see that I think I'll have to do this interview in two or three segments. Jackie is a quilter, she is a fiber artist, and she is also, a, she makes quilted bass uh, bowls. So we're gonna go check out everything that she does. And I wish you could stay, cause I'm gonna stay and have lunch with her, but I'm sure that's not possible because this is virtual. So let's go. Hello, Jackie, how are you? Oh, it's such a lovely home you have here. And are these some of your designs on the wall? They are. I was privileged to be Rhonda Blasting Games Apprentice, and this is my project from that. It's just fabulous. Can you tell us quickly about some of the pieces, some of the special uh, effects you had to use to accomplish the designs? Well, she taught me so much. You can see rust dyed fabric, uh, tea dyed fabric. We did stamping, um, sun prints. We dyed with tissue paper that you use for wrapping presents. That would be this one here, wouldn't it? It would be, yes. Oh, I love that. And then you have a clock here. I think that was well, I'm, I can't remember what it's called. I don't think that was actually, let's see, I think that was a stencil. That was a stencil okay. that we used. Okay, okay. And um, this is your uh, rust and dye. tea yeah. dyed, stained. Right. And this is painting and sun dyed on fabric, this one up here? I uh, No, that one's actually stamping and painting on fabric. Okay. Um, the sun printed one would be this one. Oh, and what then, fun you yeah, had. Oh, it was a blast. The purple one is, there are a whole lot of techniques in that one from marbling, um, sun prints that were made, uh, I guess that's not exactly, uh, you lay the fabric down and you can put salt on the fabric or, or different things and then you lay it out in the sun and then the sun will um, make fancy patterns for you. Excellent. So take us around and show us some of the things that you have on your wall, because it's like a gallery here. <laughs> so this is Jackie Watkins. Hello, hello. How, and you're a member of the Craftsman Guild? I am for about um, three and a half years now. Okay. I just went through my first uh, re upman I guess you call it. <laughs> yes, yes. Judged in again. Um, to look in the living room. There's a few things in here. Uh, this this four piece is um, it's supposed to be the four seasons with the suns in different positions. I think. Um, and so you quilted on the top of these designs um, to get the effect of piping. It almost right. looks like piping. Right. It, it's just quilting. It's some quilting from my earlier days. And it's done on the domestic machine. And so the curly cues and you go in in one direction, you go around. Do you program that into the machine? How does that work? No, I don't have a programmable machine. This was actually done sitting down at my regular sewing machine. Oh, so you twist and turn as... The spirit leads yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. On, on these, I, I do have a long arm now, but it's not computerized. It's hand guided. But these were before that time. Okay. And will we get to see that long arm today? Uh, it is in the 
studio. So All yes, right. Indeed. There's a quilt uh, loaded on it. What do we have here? Um, that was an experiment. Uh, you might have to get up close. The tree is actually made by putting a very cheap muslin on the back mm -hmm. and then um, a fabric, a good fabric on the front and you don't pre-wash anything. You quilt over it and then throw it in the washer and the dryer. And as that cheap muslin crinkles up, it makes texture for the tree. Oh, nice. And then the background, I just place different fabrics. Um, it, it's not pieced, it's placed and then quilted around. Now, I'm gonna be honest, my eyes are looking in a variety of directions because I see fabric, but then I also see these wood designs look, that look like fine craftsmanship. You didn't do those, but they look like quilts. Uh, that is true. My husband was a construction worker when we first married, and then he went into school administration, teaching and then school administration. So his hobby is working with wood. He's made several quilts, uh, flags, a fan design. And there's one table. over here, isn't there? Did he do this one? Uh, he did do that. He did do that. And then the designs below that, my bow. And then um, my brother gave me some deer antlers, and I made a sculpture for it. I love the colors on this bow. And it's sturdy, so I could put fruit in this bowl. I think you could. You can mm -hmm. put anything in it you want. And then you made this as well. This I love. Right. That's that's a sculpture. That's a sculpture that I made. Oh, my. Tell me about the process in, for making this. I used a sewing machine that did not have a flat surface. And... It's done just like the bows. You just go around, but instead of um, keeping your your rope up against each other, I would just hop it over and sew it, hop it over and sew it so that it would make holes. And because the surface of the machine allowed this to drop off, it made all this curls. Okay, okay. Let's go travel a little bit further into uh, your home area. And these are designs by your husband? Yes. And, you know, he doesn't like that top one, and that's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, he actually cut the wood from, I guess, a log, because you can see the, the Yes. Tree. And when he varnished it, it brought out the dark and the light. Nice. Um, it's just one of my favorites. Okay. Um, and then this with all the little curves in it. And so, hello, Judy. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you're here, Judy. Good day to you, and welcome. That's Judy Glover Woods, and if anyone's interested in taking good care of their health, you can contact her because she is a representative for Plexus. You can look it up, and, and you can find her on Facebook, Judy Glover Woods. That's, we have to do a little commercial in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this design. That is actually a Bethany Reynolds technique. And when I was president of Quilters by Heart's Desire, uh, we, I had a challenge to be inspired by the sun. And that is the quilt that I made to answer that challenge. And then we come around here and you can sit and be inspired by nature, the water, and when we come over here, what do we have here? Um, that is a watercolor quilt, and what you're looking at is actually a kit. And my guild wanted me to teach the watercolor quilt, and so I bought that pattern, 
uh, that kit and laid it out on a table and they all came up, followed the pattern, where to put the dark fabric, the light fabric, the medium, and then I took it home and put it together. Now, I noticed that the hanger that it's on has your initials, JW. How did you come about finding that? Well, my daughter, Catherine Erickson, made that for me for Christmas one year. And so then I had to have a quilt that matched it. <laughs> now we'd love to see the journey to your studio. All right. That's my first art quilt. And it actually uh, won a ribbon in my, okay. my local guild. There's quilts in here. This was, um, we had a challenge to use something of somebody else's. And so this is Rhonda's fabric. And these are purchase fabrics, but I think that's Rhonda's. Nice. Love the closet. <laughs> well, that's because it's got your color. Right, right. You see that, that piece? That's my color. Look at that view. Okay. Oh, and I didn't get a picture of this one here. This was one of your first ones, right? One of the first. That was uh, Wayne's grandmother's quilting frame. Oh, look, it's an antique, yes. Okay. This is one of her baskets. This is gorgeous. She even has her quilt up to there. Yeah, that's the same. It's strips and curves. That's what that's called. Is there a quilt yeah. in here? No quilt in there. No quilt in there, you all. No, there's some cross stitch. But there's a quilt there. right here behind yeah. her. This is strips and curves. And it almost looks like Drunkard's Path. It does. It does. It, this is the same technique as the... Um, so Drunkard's the Path would be a square... And then it would be two pieces of material that are sewn together on an arc that would make a drunkard's path. And it would be the way that you lay it out and would be the reason why they call it drunkard's path because it twists and turns like a drunk man trying to walk. <laughs> that one, um, I, I made it for when Mississippi had its 200th birthday. There's 20 stars, and you know, they were talking about different um, ways to make the flag. And so I named this one time 20 was plenty, and now 50 is nifty. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this you did too. I did this too. Well, I think, yeah, this is the one I did. I, I designed this one, and then my guild made another one, which I won. Okay. And so I have two of these. <laughs> I did this uh, in a Martha Ginn workshop. Oh, we love Martha Ginn from Hattiesburg. She's internationally known now. What about this one right here? I know, I bought that one. Okay, she does I, buy I things wish. too. <laughs> So you don't even buy Pittsburgh. Pardon? You don't even buy in Pittsburgh. You make all the Right, I make yeah, everything. Everything you see, I make. Uh, this was in a Maryland, Maryland Rose class. This was um, Stack and Whack. Stack and Whack? Stack so that's that roll of fabric you find. I've never mm -hmm. understood how to do that. To take it, so stack means it comes on a strip or something. Well, oh, you, you cut you your fabric, and your fabric has repeats, and so you cut as many repeats as you need, and then there's a technique to stack them, so that when you cut it, 
it makes a kaleidoscope. You cut it and then you put that particular stack together, you sew it together, and when you do, it makes a kaleidoscope. Now one thing that's important when you stack and whack is you've got to be able to cut everything even, don't you? Right, you cut it all at one time. There's a special way to pin your fabric so that it doesn't shift. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to cut, uh, I can't remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The, the, this was eight layers of fabric. So it took eight repeats of the fabric. And you cut it out. And then there's a way that you put it back together. If you'll notice that the centers each one has its own unique style. Look at that. Each one is different in one way or another. These are gorgeous. So you stacked it. My mind would be blown trying to do this. That This top was actually finished in about two days. Oh, okay. okay. Marilyn mm -hmm. Rose is a fabulous teacher and uh, it, it just was a great technique. Did you do the pillows? I did the. I didn't do the faith and the hope pillows, but I did the others. This one here and these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you say that you did uh, cross stitch and? I do most everything in my house except that one. <laughs> I would focus <laughs> on that one, but you did do but these. I did that. And there's some others in the house that I Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And so these are all my interleaved quilts in here. It's just, it's another technique. But I, I would use these. Um, so for, you do the interweave, and Marilyn Rose does the um, Borgellos. Borgellos, yeah. And this is interleave with an L. Um, oh, interleave? Leave. leave. Instead leave. of weave, it's right. leave. leave. Interleave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lori Faith Craner, she's an engineer, and she um, invented this technique. Okay. And, and it's, so if you ever look it up, it's this thing called interleave. There's some of your baskets, and I see a basket yeah. clock back there. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. Um, I have an epic fail. This was supposed to be a basket, but I thought it turned out pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like... it, it, so you just mm -hmm. never know what you're going to get. That's right. You just be happy with whatever turns out. Mm -hmm. so. That's not another design behind the door, no, is it? that's just hiding the okay. cabinet that holds all the electrical. Shoot this one down here. And I did do that one. That was on a Gwen Marston book. You remember all these names. Oh, my. And I noticed that rug. You didn't do the rug. You know I I'm gonna. Do the rug. She did do the rug. <laughs> I, did do I don't want to miss a thing. I did this rug and that rug, but not this one. Is that crochet? No, that's sewn together, isn't it? No, it it's sort of like crochet. It is. Um, I, I can't think right now exactly what they called it. So quilting is actually a world of its own. I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we can make it yours. <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> uh, um, over there is a thread painting. Oh, I love thread painting. And I did that in, in a class. I really want Judy to see this. Thread painting. Now that's really an art, an incredible art form. Take a look at that. It's done with I, I, I'm, I'm looking at You can this. see it. I'm blown away. This and this is, is another I one of the what do you call that's that's an interlude. See, look at the color. Yeah. 
this is actually, if you look at it, it's um, flying geese. You did this? I did. Mm. So the pattern is the flying geese. But um, I uh, interleaved flying geese mm -hmm. together. Wonderful. And why made that bow? Well, he needs to be a member of the Craftsman's Guild. I'm not settling for anything less. And this is one of your designs? My no. Brother. It's a painting. My brother painted that one. Okay. But that one's mine. MQA had a 25-year challenge. And so to explain that quilt, let's say that that's an oak that's been around for a long time. And... MQA has old time members and it has the youth and so that just I love the dark of night mm -hmm. and the dawn of day and I did call it sunrise sunset uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> good you recognize me my daughter took that quilt and painted it oh my oh, nice. So there's the painted version that her daughter did. can be, it's a family affair. Very nice. And then in this room. Again? We have a Diane Williams original. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Don't you love your friends? They own some of your artwork. Mm -hmm. It's just like, my God. Thank you. This is. I did. Her name is Bossy, which was actually my middle name. This is a quilt, name. you all. That is just Isn't it? fabulous. Her eyes reach out at you. Now, that is a Laura Heine pattern that I, um, I, I can't draw, so I used her drawing of the mm -hmm. cow, and then I did it my way. You see those eyes, Diane? Yes, there's personality mm -hmm. in those eyes. I never could get it started, and Crystal Jenkins came over, and she started placing some fabric on it, and then um, I, I was able to, to, do it. To, to go at it. I was supposed to teach a class on um, binding techniques, and so I made three different pillows to go in here that had all different kinds of binding techniques. I would love to learn that technique. And I can show you, um, this is like quilt on a quilt. Oh yes, I see what you just, when you touched it. Yeah. What about the rug, this rug? I did make that. Don't you, her home, there's so <laughs> much that she has done in this home, yeah, including like this, this quilt. I love the circles and the squares. And the earth tone. Oh, and you have a copy of Diane Williams' book. I do. There's another book under there, too. I've read, I've read um, that oh, one. Oh, thank you so much. I haven't read this one yet. It's, it's on my radar to read. Thank you. <laughs> but back to you. <laughs> now explain this one. Okay. Patty, I mean, let's see. Katie. Pasquini Mossopus teaches a class, and that is what this is. And let me, I'll have to think a minute about the name of it. I, it's like I'll Twilight to, Zone to I'll me, a vertigo. What you do is you take a picture that you really like, and you draw a grid on just a piece of plastic. And that grid then becomes your pattern that you sit over top of your picture that you like. And then each of these colors is in that part of the grid. And so you just make um, log cabin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing is New York. 
this, the hustle. I'm yeah. seeing New York. Yeah. This, this was um, when we went out west. I took a photograph of these like desert flowers, and there was a lot of green behind it, and then just you know a few flowers. So that that was the inspiration for that. Awesome. <laughs> that was a, a present from somebody who stayed here and Aww. so when they got back home they sent that for me so, yeah. and if you'd like to go upstairs I can show you oh there's more. an upstairs yeah. okay when we moved in that's original oh I've seen people do that I just can't put that in my head on how that's done, those strips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, I know. It's, it's actually done on a grid, and I can show you in about two minutes how to do that. Yeah. And I did use the design wall on that. See, a master artist will say, I can show you in about two minutes. Oh, I can. I oh, and did, did you work with this one, or did you find this fabric like that? I found the fabric many years ago. I found this fabric, and I only bought about a half a yard of it, and I thought, I don't know what I'll ever do with this. And then about, I don't know, five, ten years later, I walked into Stitch and Frame, and they had a kit. A neighborhood was in that kit. I can't, three neighborhoods, I, I can't remember the name of it. But I bought two of the kits because the kit had that same fabric in it. I never seen it before, mm. nor since. Mm -hmm. And um, I incorporated all of theirs, th those two kits together to make a huge quilt. Is that one of your baskets there? Yes, and it's made with the leftover leftovers from that quilt. Oh, and I love it. The stones. I just want you to have any spare time. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. Wayne plays golf and I do this. <laughs> That's a Martha Ginn piece. Oh, yes. She's on exhibit currently at, at the uh, Pace, Pace Setters, Setters Gallery mm -hmm. yeah. with similar type yeah. work. Right. She sells there. Um, they rep I guess you say they, they represent her, them. yes. That's my very first bow before I knew what I was doing. And oh. the figure on there is a Kathy Loomis piece. She's a uh, quilt artist from Louisville, Kentucky, and she's won big, huge mm -hmm. things like the Japanese quilt show and all kinds of places. I feel like she's my best friend, but I've never met her. I know, right? <laughs> I, I've seen her uh, give talks. You can go through there. Okay. Now, what about this right here? Watch your head. Okay. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Uh, it's a two fabric Bargello. That's a Bargello, yes. Yeah. And Marilyn Rose taught me that. Yeah, she's That's the queen of Bargellos, Marilyn Rose. We have an interview with her that I hope everyone will get to watch. Yeah. But she. I'm looking forward to that. And then. Yes. I'm going to see you. This is one. Julia Graver teaches this class. And one last one. of her bowls. And look at what she puts down in there. You see? Is that her signature of the tree? Is that her somebody's signature? I well, do not see. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Right here, another bunch of oh. oh, that's gorgeous. There's my color. Mm. I, know. <laughs> I love that. Did you name this piece? No, I don't think so. But it has such okay. personality. Life's Ups and Downs. <laughs> yes, very nice title. So that's a Borgello, you all. And there's only two pieces of fabric. 
this piece and this piece, and it's the way that you, uh, the technique yes. that you use. Uh, I guess this would be the third piece, but what actually makes the which really uh, brings it all together, and you come right to the center of the design of the Borgello because of the brown that's in there. Fabulous. Thank you so much. You are welcome. It's been my pleasure. Um, you have an incredible studio and storage space and every, oh my gosh. And it's like you can have a class here. Take a look around, everyone. And we have had some classes here. I'm working on some projects. Um, this looks very industrious. <laughs> I have a little friend who is five years old and is recovering from kidney cancer. And this will be her quilt if I can ever figure out how I want to quilt it. Oh, awesome. And your view. Oh out onto Lake Caroline. You know, oh we, my gosh. When we built the house, we figured out what rooms we were gonna spend the most time in. And we designed it so that those rooms would face the water. And look at this long arm. Now this is a manual, did you say? Did you tell right, me it's earlier? Not, it's not computerized. It's an old one. I bought it because I wanted to see, um, and I bought it used. I wanted to see if I really enjoyed quilting on a quilting machine, and I can say it's 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 iffy. It's um, I do enjoy it, but sometimes I like piecing little things mm -hmm. better. One of the things people don't realize when they want to purchase a quilt. They want, you know, they go, oh, the price. We won't even talk about details on the price, but you have to understand that piecing it together is putting the pieces, and I've said this before, putting the pieces together in preparation. And once you get those pieces put together, then you're going to put some batting in the middle, like a cotton, uh, uh, almost like the size of a bedspread in the middle and a backing, which is another fabric on the back that it has not been pieced, but a solid piece of fabric, unless you're making a reversible quilt. And then when you want to sew those three pieces together, that is called quilting. And so what goes into, whether you have someone else do your long arming for you or you do it yourself, a quilt is a very valuable item to have in your possession. Right. The, the fabric these days uh, can be very costly. <laughs> yeah. It keeps going. So you have a Janome, you know, people are always in, and a Kenmore. I have several of these machines. I, they are just like my best friend. I love working with them. But I do have a, a big genome that I do most of my piecing mm -hmm. on. I, I've discovered that I can make my rope bows on uh, the Kenmore and maybe not put so much stress on my big machine. Okay. So I'm, I'm sure you have like storages filled with threads because what you do takes a lot of thread. So you want to see my threads? <laughs> oh, you knew I would want to see that. Yes. and patterns and I would have cleaned this up if I'd known we were going to film this <laughs> <laughs> no people need to see what goes into this yeah, I mean you can't have it so clean yeah. that you don't want to mess it up right I, I've done that and that's not fun no because um, you're not working when you're worried right. about that uh, more threads Threads in the bottom for the quilting machine. See, I get overwhelmed when I think about all of this, and I, <laughs> then I can't make a decision. So if you're like me, uh, start out with kits, because they'll tell you what kinds of colors you should be using in right. your designs. And this is just a wonderful studio for teaching. Then you have your computer here. Uh, do you design as well? Let's talk about this piece in front of me right here. 
This is one of my favorites. My husband took a photograph in Ithaca, New York. Um, it was around one of the falls of which there are tons. There are so many falls in Ithaca. The roots of the trees are all exposed and I, I just made a, a quilt from his photograph. And the further away you go, it almost looks like a painting. Right. And then when you come up close, you can see some of the detail on this fabric and how she's gone about doing that. Excellent. And then mm -hmm. I've actually had a neighbor come over and say, oh, Jackie, I didn't know that you painted. And I said, come feel it. I don't paint. <laughs> but, um, that, that's a, con I call it confetti technique. This is a twisted branches technique. I saw this by Bonnie Lynn McCafferty. I think it's how you say her name. Um, at the first quilt show that I ever went to. And I, I kind of incorporated her technique in my work and I teach that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then the confetti quilting, um, Noriko Endo did that. I saw that on Simply Quilts one day and I thought, oh, I need to do that. And so in a week I had a quilt and this one has won uh, Best Contemporary artistry in the Pine Belt Quilter Show. And it's also won some first and second places in some other shows. And I think each of us that quilts or does art, uh, fiber art designs, we have a plethora or, or I should say a, a complete library. I've been peeking in that closet. <laughs> And everywhere in your home, there are books, books, books. There were books in the cabinet when you opened the, yeah. the doors. And so you have a plethora of books. It's important to be a life learner. And, and this, <clears throat> although somebody may walk by our booth and say, oh, I can do that. Yeah. We have studied and looked at and can come to understand not just I can do this one, but understand a little bit about the history of designs and et cetera, et cetera. And the, oh my goodness, take a look at the piece on the right. So these, the, what do we call these geometric shapes? Uh, that's a triaxial weave. I have that up there to remind me that I'm teaching that in November and I have to do a video and it, it's just there to, um, harp on me to get busy. <laughs> you can see the three dimensions there. I mean, it just looks so dimensional. And so on and so on. That was done for a cherry wood fabric challenge. Mm -hmm. I tried to get into their upcoming show and it didn't make it, but that's okay. I garnered a quilt out of it. That's uh, right. Graffiti was um, the challenge mm -hmm. and to me that's a favorite quilt shop that's the sign that's written on the side of the building and you know how graffiti artists will just spray paint and yes. everything and they'll have their pretty <clears throat> words well that's how I answered that challenge and the next one um, we have a reaction series going on with Southern Fiber Artist. Uh, Leanne Green made the background and then we reacted to the background and several people did in the group. She made about 24 backgrounds and had fabric there for us to use that had Stima Seam or Misty Fuse on the back. And we would cut out shapes and put that on there and then we had to come back home and quilt it and make it 12 by 12. What a really cool thing to so do. That was fun, so it's a collaboration. Yeah. And then the next one, uh, with Southern Fiber Artists, we have a challenge each um, quarter, and this one was gray and fun. So there's gray in the background, and I just said that it was more fun to grow flowers on a quilt than in a garden, because I don't, <laughs> I'm not gonna work outside in a garden. Uh, and so on your, now I want to talk about the wall. Let's okay. talk about the wall. Do you call this your designing wall? It is. It's, this is my design wall. Uh, my husband put that up for me and I, did, I put a flap 
final sheet over this, um, I'm not even sure, I think it's like an insulation board, mm -hmm. two pieces of insulation board that you use in house construction. And so uh, we put flat out over it and uh, things will just stick to it. And out of these pieces are pinned, but they'll actually just stick to it. It's a great way to plan your designs, lay it out, get to see how it looks. Another thing you is once you lay it out, you can take a picture, yeah. then you can try it different ways to see what works the best, what colors work the best, what design techniques should change. And you're, you're starting to work here. This is your work table. There's a lot of things happening. You got pin cushions, water, so you don't get, oh, you got my favorite. I use that too. Yeah. So you're about to start something yeah. new. Yeah, I'm, I intend to put purple flowers on here to look like violets. And I'm not sure, maybe red flowers, white flowers. Um, and... I'm probably going to have these for sale at the Crafts Museum, Craftsman Center. Okay. And so you you have, you said you've been a member of the Guild for at least three years. You re-adjudicated in. But how long have you been sewing? Uh, I've been sewing since probably 11 years old. See, she's not going to tell her age. I couldn't even trick her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you my age. I'm 70. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, so you've been sewing since you were a little girl. I have, I too. Know. Wonderful. Whatever. And so that tells us something that people looking at this video, you know, we've got a lot of things going on with our youth today. Mm -hmm. And a great thing to do is start them when they're young. And sometimes, whether it's the woodworking or the quilting, it may stay with them as a, a part of their joy, even during a pandemic for the rest of their lives. I am hoping so. My granddaughter was here a couple of weeks ago. She's eight. She made her third quilt with me, and I took her to the Quilters by Heart's Desire meeting so that she could tell her process. She actually had drafted it with little numbers because she wanted it 20 inches. And I, I didn't know she was doing this. I was in here working and she brought it to me and said, man, I want to make this quilt. So we made that quilt. She picked mm -hmm. out some Ricky Tim's fabric that's pretty expensive per yard. So she's going to be a good quilter. She has very expensive taste. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of tips would you share with someone wanting to get into the art quilt or uh, what are your suggestions or, or the things they should not do? I think mainly is don't be afraid. You can learn how to quilt. You can learn how to sew. You can follow all the rules. But it, when it comes to art quilt, be like a kid. Break the rules. Just have fun with it. Um, and don't worry if you're wanting to win awards. Don't enter your quilts into fine quilting shows. Go into the art world where you will be appreciated. Um, but the main thing is have confidence in, in your own abilities. Only try to prove things to yourself, not to anyone else. Stay true to yourself. You'll have a lot of fun and you'll be very successful. You have said everything that I totally believe in, <laughs> and, and that's what brings you joy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wonderful. I love your studio. Does your studio have a name? Sometimes people name, if they're a musician, they name their instruments, no. their cars. <laughs> I, and, I, I, haven't, I haven't named it anything. It's, it's just my, my happy place. <laughs> Are there um, any other designs you want to show us today? Um, I see one in the hallway. Uh, that one, and I, I can't remember the artist's name, but I had her permission to copy one of her paintings. And this is the quilt that I made from her painting. She's a Mississippi painter. And I'm sorry, I can't for the life of me think of her name. Um, she did 
she was a friend of one of the Quilters by Heart's Desire members, so she took a picture of it and actually showed it to the painter. Well, Jackie, we want to thank you no, today welcome. for showing us the designs. And I wish you all were here with us because I'm about to have some lasagna for lunch. <laughs> she not only quilts, but she cooks. And I, the aroma is so wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting us to your home. 